reputation around the world. And of course, everybody realizes they are unbeaten since the World Cup in Italy. So Colombia, given that they don't perform all that well against them in the past or haven't, know what they're up against tonight. Broad smile on the face of uh, Batistuta there. Gabriel Batistuta, Fiorentina player, and he says he will stay with Fiorentina even though they've been relegated from Serie A. Off we go to the start of a game which promises so much. Let us hope we will not be disappointed. The Argentinians have brought Borelli in at the back. You saw him getting his first touch of the ball there. Beautiful flick by Batistuta. They're looking very good early on, and he's brought down, I would have thought. No, the referee Mario Resendez of Brazil simply weighs play on. A stroke forward there. Very neatly by Basualdo. Basualdo and the team plays from River Plate. Didn't play in the first game, came into the second one. And I thought looked very comfortable. Defender again. Goes forward by Borelli. There's a very brisk, business-like appearance about Argentina. Uh, but nevertheless, I said that about Uruguay the other night against Ecuador, and then he disappeared for about 50 minutes, and then came with an almost grandstand finish, and then beaten at the end by that glorious goal by Echeragua. A confetti-strewn pitch on a night that's touching festival almost, as these Ecuadorians grateful for getting this competition, are very proud of this stadium. Looking a bit nervous, the Colombians, touch there, inside. Rodriguez looking very po prominent, there he is. Pushed on to Altiberano, looking for a little one-two. Run through by Simeone. Well, look to me as if he's brought down, he's taking a chance, it goes, it goes! Oh, incredible! Simeone! And I make it, there's only two minutes gone, Argentina are in the lead. 1-0. Now, this is incredible. He may well have got a penalty out of that. Watching it in a close-up, I don't think it was, but many a referee has given it for that, but he kept his head. That, that I think, you put down to sheer professionalism. Many another player would have been lying doing the dying swan act for that, but he got up, kept his head, and from the most incredible angle, puts Argentina in the lead. Well, I think it was a penalty now. Well, it shows you, if, if you take different angles, it tells different stories. Oh, penalty kick without any doubt. Well, let's say he took it almost from the corner flag. That was very cool play by Simeone. Two minutes gone, as I said. Oh, a little bit of nastiness creeping in right away. I'm sure the Colombians have been stung by that, and the goal scorer gets it in the jaw. Now, look at that. I think we'll call him the Iceman after this. And I wonder if that European experience of his steadied him, because many a South American uh, player would have been throwing himself about in agony. Well, this scene is so reminiscent of the Azteca Stadium in Mexico and some of the stadium, the River Plate Stadium in Argentina for the which I've been in watching all this litter, but very pleasant litter, I must say, <laughs> giving it almost the look of a, a village pitch down there in the middle of a canyon. Now, what Colombia very good at is close possession. Rincon tries to get a shot in. Oh, it's a glorious goal! What an equaliser! Rincon 
Four and a half minutes gone, and what a marvellously explosive start to this game. Now, I did say they were very good at close passing. Now, he kept his nerve, kept control, three defenders in front of him, and wallop. There was no line down for the Colombia. Oh, even from that angle at the back, you can see, he really didn't have much to aim for. And this, the most explosive start of any game we've yet seen in the Copa America. And Colombia now with a bit between their teeth because I think this might stagger the Argentinians the way they've come back. Freddy Rincon, the scorer. And we hear Real Madrid are interested in this player. I wonder why. Now the break. Terrible defensive. He's going in for the shot and goal, brilliantly saved, Cordoba. Diego Cordoba. Well, I've just renamed him, I think his first name is actually Oscar Cordoba. Anyway, whatever you call him in his first name, that was a marvellous save. He is a great admirer, by the way, of the Mexican goalkeeper, Campos. A very colourful character, and I think this game will have to be refereed very closely. And why is the referee not getting into the middle of this? He was standing back there like an idle spectator. He should be in the middle sorting this out, not the players themselves. Or else we're going to have anarchy reigning on this pitch. Now there's been a simmering of this underneath the surface of some of these games. And I hope it doesn't erupt now. Well, six and a half minutes gone and we've heard everything. I think uh, a yellow card, well this is, I, I think this is negligent refereeing. First of all, he's got to show clearly who's got the yellow card. And he stayed well out of that as the players jostled with one another. That shouldn't have been the case. Over it goes. Well, this man has been very prominent, Rodriguez, getting down the right. What's he doing now? He wants them to put it back again. Well, I, I, that shows you, doesn't it? He wanted out of the way when there was trouble, and a little niggly thing like that, he's across. Oh, it's there. Can he put it in? No. Great effort there as Borelli tried to come through from the back. He was up for the corner kick. There he was, coming back again to defend. And I think Argentina relishing the fact that they're playing away from altitude now. They've been away up there in the Andes and now they're back at sea level again, or just above it. And there's a freshness about their play which I think exactly reflects that situation. in by Herrera now Valderrama he has slowed down considerably Valderrama but on the other hand uh, the brain still functions in the most creative way Watch the attacking of Valencia on this side and Rincon, the man who scored a goal on the other. This is Valencia. Coming forward there was Herrera from the back. Now the break. Break of the man I, I was talking about, Rodriguez, streaming forward and too far in front of Batistuta. Valderrama. I think the value of, of Valderrama is, is not so much uh, 
the ability to get involved in the hardest of play, but it's opening it up for others. Now, I suppose they've got the right kind of combination. Uh, you've already seen the explosive power of Rincon. Well, Valencia has it as well. Remember that glorious goal if you've been watching the tournament that uh, he scored earlier on against Bolivia. Superb stuff. And with uh, these two playing up front, if they're released by Valderrama, that's what really matters for this team. And that's what he's been doing for them with some superb passing. There he is again. I can predict he will simply float through this game with the greatest of ease. Valderrama. They're playing the ball about confidently. The crowd are on their side, quite obviously. The underdogs. And Valderrama caught out. This will annoy Argentina. But I just get the impression that they are beginning to look awesome on the break. Well, they'll have to watch number 20, Rodriguez from Atlanta. to uh, Valderrama to Rincon looking to the side to Valencia just getting underneath that something uh, some of the shooting from a distance hasn't been all that brilliant well there's this incident again that's fascinating the Ecuadorians he really should have had a penalty now that I've looked at it six different times from six different angles the referee doesn't have that advantage, of course, but it didn't matter in the end. wings for the moment with Valencia Valencia can see number 11 there going on the outside that should not bother Roy Cachilla plays in Paraguayan football really must be the uh, calling for Argentina and Uruguay in particular to have so many players so near at hand not even going uh, to Europe, some of them playing in Mexican football as well. At the back, uh, Lionel Alvarez, ex Real Valladolid, now plays for American Cali. He's been playing in the international team solidly, regularly for five years. You notice him a lot at the back, number 14. Valderrama. That's unlike him to give it away just as easily as that. Hooked away by the goal scorer, Simeone. Now Valderrama. Beautiful pass and glorious play. Valencia coming in, can he put it away? No! now I think there are one or two people thinking that that might have been a penalty well 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 I'll tell you what that was very near it indeed if not so I, I think I would have given a penalty kick then I would have run straight away from the Argentinians because I don't think they would have liked it seemed a penalty to me glorious move by uh, Colombia I think the best move of the game so far all coming again from the intelligent foot of Valderrama. It shows you, you don't need to be running about like 
Uh, a 400 meters man in a game like this, if you've got intelligence. The best players always make it look easy. Well, as expected, right in the middle, Redondo. He's going to be a very much a key man today, Redondo from Tenerife. As Valderrama again, watch him, coaxing the players forward, judging his pass. Almost got away there, glorious to watch that. Can a play, they break again, and I think offside. Well, we've now played, uh, according to my watch, 15 minutes, and we've had some of the best football of the tournament thus far. Touched uh, forward by Gomez. And that was that glorious goal by Rincon. Argentina now know they're really in a game tonight. Redondo. Uh, he's got to put it inside. Batistuta going for it now, just ahead of him. And he has had such a frustrating tournament, doing a lot of running after the ball rather than running with it. Valderrama. Virtually always finding his man. They back to Herrera. to do but I think uh, Cordoba will deal with that sufficiently well by Rodriguez there's a Redondo I think there might be a free kick in that yes there is indeed and by the way I'm, I'm told you might be having a little bit of uh, difficulty with sound but uh, don't worry about that we'll keep going Free kick, little niggly ones, I have to say. Picked up there by Ruggeri. And after that wonderfully fluctuating first 15 minutes, I think uh, we're settling into cat and mouse game in midfield I think they're now beginning to close down on each other it was all so open and excitingly free but now it's tightened up considerably oh very good running indeed by Altimirano he may get a free kick out of it no Brazilian decides it's a goal kick Herrera, one of the older players in this team, plays for Atletico Nacional, but brought in for his experience in defence, nicely touched on to Valencia, to Rincon, Rincon looks for a little bit of support, 
Uh, he had to do that because if you look to the left hand side of him, could you see a yellow jersey? No, you couldn't. So he, he had to go for the line. I said Argentina have uh, brought into the uh, side Jorge Borelli, one of the home base players. It has to be said of Argentina, by the way, that when they won the championship two years ago, they were largely home base players they did it with. That, that is to their credit. Argentina, at their best, are always a joy to watch. Superb little ball there inside by Rodriguez, and I think offside, and I, I think the man who's making them tick has been number 20, Rodriguez. From Atlanta, as I said, doesn't have the same reputation at 26 years of age that Simeone has at 23, or that Estuta has, again, three years younger than him, but he's been very influential tonight. on there by Herrera that's Alvarez that's the man I was talking about you've seen him popping up on the right and the left and the man behind the Really, the opening goal for disturbing that defense. Not at all surprising that the pace has slackened off. They couldn't keep that going, that opening 10 minutes. They couldn't keep that going for 90 minutes, that's for sure. Now who gets it? It's uh, Colombia's free kick. Valderrama turned beautifully in that. I think may have been fouled. Well, in that uh, area there where the Argentinians are, the coach, Basile, 50 years of age, trying to build up a team to regain the World Cup. He's going about his business very well indeed, as I said, they've been unbeaten since then. And would you believe, that if they get to the final, Argentina, they will only have five days rest before they're all taken away to a training camp to prepare for World Cup qualifying games. Some people think the professional footballer leads the life of Larry, you know, yachts and pasta tails and a sip of champagne. There's the other side to it. Training camps. That's Valderrama going down. As I said, Valderrama certainly enjoyed his period with Montpellier. And there's a booking coming up. Looked to me like Medina Bello has been booked. Very late tackle on Valderrama. And I'll make it 23 minutes gone. Well, they say Zapata. They got it wrong, as they occasionally do in their captions. Now there's a free kick, and well over the top. Some of them not at all in the same category as Munoz, the Ecuador player, who really shows you how to take free kicks. I think that ball has just gone out. Good interception there by Badistuta, but he's, he's still not getting the right service. Most of the attacking is, uh, is really coming from midfield. a pity because in actual fact Rincon 
had pulled himself free of that little bunch of players. over the way he almost got away with that Valencia again stemming from Valderrama in midfield Batistuta going to get away with that one doesn't this is Valencia who's gone to the left good turn he's a big awkward looking customer but can he turn don't be put off by the, the, the flailing arms and the kind of loping style of his, he's eating up the ground and he's got control as well must be very difficult to play against Valderrama I think he was asking for that, chased by Batistusta dead into space again back to him to watch this kind of play from a man in midfield playing intelligently well, that was a very skillful build up there by Colombia knocking the ball about until he, he possibly saw a man free on the edge of the box they're playing some of the best football of the tournament now Valderrama seemed to be taken out of that away goes Basualdo Trying to follow on to that Medina Bello. A lot of good play in this game. I think uh, Herrera was looking downfield, taking his eye off the ball there. simply and obviously he's trying to make himself elusive they don't know where the danger is going to come from well that's uh, definitely a yellow card and I think Gomez gets it a yellow card for Gomez what a harsh tackle oh yes yes a great deal of belligerence in that one as done went Zapata on come the physios as I said Argentina will only have five days of grace if they do get to the final before they start training for the, the World Cup qualifications it has to be said of some of these South American teams that, that there, there is a an inclination to think that they take much, much more seriously the Copa Libertadores, that's the South American Club Championship, and the World Cup qualifiers much more so than this tournament. And yet, I think this tournament has generated, as these teams have got going, generated its own interest, its own motivation. And I think that this is now beginning to be made clear in Argentina's performance. They've been criticized for what they've been doing previously. And now they've been pulled back to, to what all in, in this marvellous setting here, brilliant pitch. The players were on it uh, the day before and gave it 10 out of 10 with an extra point for neatness. A couple here by Simeone. Simeone had a marvellously flowing start to the game and then sort of disappeared out of it. Rodriguez, I did tell you he was really functioning. Batistuta, free kick. Well, I think he's pretty fortunate to get that because I think he was going to lose possession of the ball anyway. Strong look. 
looking square set uh, appearance there of Redondo, number five. Either he or Rodriguez about to take it. Looks to be like Redondo. No. Over to Rodriguez. It's the top. Oh, that's a very neat header. Barish Tuta was hanging in there. It was whipped away. Gomez got his foot to, to uh, get that away. The Argentinians complaining about that. 15 minutes of the first half remaining. And they claimed that there, were, there was a hand used. But he's too, too very annoyed about this, but he should get out of it. You'll get nothing for dissent. Now, what were the... Well, yes, there was a rebound, and I, I, it may have struck hand, but I think it was purely accidental. been heaping praise on Rodriguez but he's been well backed up of course by the likes of Redondo whom you saw at that close up of the free kick although nobody has been as influential as Valderrama in midfield those subtle passes of his and they're successful at the moment Colombian keeping the ball away from Vanistu and there he is again tries to go through and the goalkeeper and out he comes Oscar Cordoba In this uh, football mad nation, which has been obsessed by the need for the home uh, country Ecuador to get a, a, a victory, this crowd are relishing this game. This is no mere academic exercise, this has been competitive right from the start. Touched by Rodriguez and the poor finish, tired looking finish indeed. Bello getting behind that tall figure there of Carlos Perea. Carlos Perea, by the way, number 15, strong at the back, plays for Independiente Cali. Miguelie Redondo, I think, handled that. Yes, indeed. Valderrama very quickly away, seeing the open player. Beautiful bank healer there. Oh, that was wonderful play there by Aristizabo. Turning them one way and the other. Well, all the attention has been concentrated on Rincon for his goal and Valencia up front, but let us not forget this buzzing little player, Aristizabo, number nine, Victor Aristizabo. He's reminding us he's on the field. We've seen hardly anything of him. He is the man who laid on that marvellous goal for Valencia in their opening match for Colombia. be a free kick I think about 12 minutes remaining of this marvellous first half and that buzz you hear in the background an attempt to start the, the Mexican wave well Argentina have settled down again really shocked but that goal by Rincon. Hard falls free. Simeone with it. to just over the head. Altamirano had come forward. And Sonia to that. Another corner kick. Not a bad time to score a goal just before half time. I make it. Uh, about 10 minutes before half time. 
Rodriguez has gone to the far side to take it. Up it goes, Simeone gets his head to it. Man at the back, uh, have been up as well, Borelli. And that should be right to the arms of the goalkeeper. He do that so deftly. That was superb play there by Rincon. Now Valderrama. Valencia. He charges after it. Looking inside and slightly weighted. Down comes Koikachia. And I think he was fouled. Well, the game from the start has been flowing remarkably from uh, midfield into the penalty area with passes which have been struck, or oh, I would say only about two or three passes before we get that exciting ending like that. If you compare that to some of the football we've been watching by some of the other teams, notably Peru, who take about 50 passes to gain three yards, and it's all about possession and it's circular, this is an object lesson to everybody of the best kind of South American football when they really get going. Valderrama and he's he's brought back as a free kick just as well for Argentina because Valderrama looked to have a wicked gleam in his eye there he had a little bit of freedom there he is again that's a reverse pass is a beautiful one cut across there by Herrera as Valderrama yet again cuts him up with beautiful passing watch that It had to be weighted to perfection, and it was. Valencia again tried to draw it back. Big lad, uh, Valencia. They say that Bayer and Munich are interested in him. Simeone to Redondo. Right now, to Vasquez. A oh, beautifully touched back. Simeone. Excellent football now from both sides. Look at the way they touch it confidently about from Vasvaldo to Redondo. The way out to Medina Bello. There he is, it's a useful one, that is Tuta. Might just keep it in. Knocks it back to Simeone. Simeone inside. It's Rodriguez, touches that beautifully through, looking to the far side, not a bad ball. Altamarino was coming in from the far side, seven minutes of the first half gone. Well, we've had a lot of exciting games, a lot of goals in some of the games, a marvellous ending. To the game you may have uh, seen last night between Ecuador and Uruguay but I think this is the best footballing match in the purest sense that we've seen in the, in the competition both of these sides playing positive football the control in midfield at times from the likes of Valderrama and uh, Rodriguez has been outstanding running off the ball, the running forward, particularly by the Colombians, notably Valencia, of course, and Rincon, backed up just occasionally by Alistair Zabel. All of that combined to make this a perfect uh, footballing night. Well, maybe not just quite perfect, but it's getting near to it compared to the other matches we've seen. That's 
where he's not able to go just as he used to. Yeah, just simply scoot past three players. Little flick of his steps. He doesn't have that in him any longer. Oh, Redondo at his best now. Clip forward. That is Duter lays it out wide. Well, really, that's the first time we've seen Redondo come forward as aggressively as that. He's played a, a rather languid role in midfield. He's, he's been effective in many ways, pushing the ball around, but he can attack as well as Rodriguez has been there. Simeone looking for the one two Now, Valderrama, he's got a little bit of space. Valderrama coming away, lays it off. Wood almost came on there to Valencia. Very good play by Altimirano getting back. He read the danger very well in that pass inside him. Moreno was there on to Valencia. Tricky character. Alistair Tabo couldn't get clear of that. Now the break, Simeone puts it way forward. All he was doing was getting it out of the penalty area. Now here is Alvarez. from the back the three ways play on Valencia nice little ball and I think offside but I wonder about that that Aristizabal was caught offside I'm not sure he was when the pass was made which is how the judgment should be made our two Argentinian supporters in the background of course since uh, that opening spell and one each of the better chances and Yoni puts it right inside is there anybody coming up for Argentina? no we've got to get players forward and greater numbers for these breakaways that's a free kick Gomez brought down Valencia doesn't get away from his marker this time who is Borelli Giorgi Borelli oh magnificent play there Herrera doing well did that with contemptuous ease Gonzalez is brought down uh, Rodriguez rather Rodriguez it is I wonder if he twisted his ankle in the process now he's not going to get very much sympathy the referee certainly will not bring on the physio despite him acting out of scene of death of a salesman kick and I make it all I, we're in the last minute in fact by my watch Gonzalez himself has recovered he'll take a little chip in not a bad move flipped away there by Rincon who was back at defence up in the air by Rodriguez again got a lot of forward Simone inside and there's a shot there by Rodriguez who made a marvellous recovery, didn't he?
Redondo right in the thick of it again and getting his legs out of the way. Beautiful play by Rodriguez again, but it's two turn. Oh, Rodriguez is annoyed with him. After having done all that work, he's fed a pass in which a pair of running shoes would have been more appropriate. And there goes the halftime whistle. The end of a quite excellent first half of football. A breathtaking start, that goal by Simeone. But in fact, it might easily have been a penalty kick. Uh, but on he went to keep his cool and from an almost impossible angle, that cliche we use when we uh, can't really describe just how narrow the angle was. In geometric terms, he put the ball into the back of the neck. And there we are, Argentina looked as if they might sail through then. But I've already said that this Colombian team of abundance uh, of talent in them. A superb strike by Rincon. Even though the penalty area was crowded, he managed to get the ball through one each. I think we'll get a lot more in the second half when you join us for the game live. Football for a second half in which both teams are certainly clearly intent on winning it as getting to the top of the section. Uh, to play Uruguay. I think they both had a look at Uruguay and fancied the chances against them. So I don't think there's any politicking going on about uh, they're both through to the quarterfinals. So let's not uh, cut each other up. They've really gone at each other as witness the bookings we've had as well as these quite excellent goals. So what a start we had and it lived up to it for the rest of the 45 minutes. We hope the second half does as well. Outstanding performances by many people, but I would pick out the man right in the picture there. There he is, Valderrama. Gloriously subtle passing. Valderrama, by the way, was the South American Player of the Year in 1987 and voted the best player of the Copa America in 1987. And at 31 years of age, he could yet be a contender this time. It's not so much that he's heavily involved in a match, it's the effect that he has on the player around him that matters so much. And isn't that the way we should be judging players? Oh, Dr. Chia seemed to whether he hot his right ankle there as he went up for that as Valderrama heads in interesting Argentinian goalkeeper not at all happy and there is a little conversation going on between the two captains Valderrama and Ruggeri and Ruggeri is I'm trying to referee this game at the moment I think I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if he ends up doing that because this referee uh, his way of dealing with trouble is to run as fast away from it as he possibly can. That's uh, the impression I get. Ruggeri. Break back there by Valencia, but I think he's going to get a free kick out of this. Superb play there by Herrera. Little man who has great pace. So brilliantly in by Valencia. This right inside there. Arista Sabo waiting for it. The touch and goal and should be taken by Goika Chia. And didn't I say this game with this wonderful fluidity to it? They've done away with all that uh, tip tapping in midfield, which we saw in their earlier games. The route is longitudinal now right down the park three or four touches and we're getting into the penalty area and that makes such a big difference particularly from Colombia way he goes again Herrera on the outside Valencia the man who took it from him the last time Valderrama can't get that and there's still a lot of great football in this 
It is not such a, an extreme contrast of styles, of course, but there is the contrast. I would suggest that Colombia have a mix of the, the kind of Argentinian-style football with a bit of the Brazilian flair added to it. Probably getting more to the Brazilian style than the Argentinian one, but a cross, a kind of hybrid, if you like. In Argentina, or Argentina. Organized, always capable of bringing out a goal like the one we saw earlier on, and very hard to beat. And Valencia to Rincon, they're crowding him out now and uh, being pulled back there by Alvarez. That's a kind of production there. There's a card going up. Do I see? For a moment, I thought there was a red card coming out there. And there may have been an elbow involved. There may have been an elbow involved, and Rincon is going off. Rincon is off. Well, that's uh, quite sensational. There was a flurry there, but it was, you know, it, it didn't seem to me... Well, you don't approve of it, let me say that for a start. You don't approve of, of uh, arms being raised and elbows, but it was just one of these instinctive flurries. And I know in several nations around the world, the referees would interpret that rather differently. And, very sadly, the man who scored that opening goal is now off five minutes of the second half gone, and really, that is a, a dreadful handicap. And Redondo has joined him, even as we spoke, he went out as well. Redondo, so the two of them are they're down to ten men each now. In that uh, confusion, it's ten men. There'll be more space in the field, that's, that's for sure. And a shot there at Goikachia. So two red cards given in all the confusion and the melee in midfield. Redondo off as well. What a pity. It certainly adds to the, the dramatic motif that has run right through this game, what we could have done without that. As well do as done, and I hope this game doesn't deteriorate. Oh, what am I talking about? Now, if what we saw deserves red cards, what do you make of that? Now, I did hint on earlier in this game that I didn't fancy this referee, the way he stood away back and allowed the players to sort themselves out with that difficulty they had earlier on. And now look what's happening. That was inconsistency. He's the kind of referee who might decide, look, I'll, I think I'll, I'll stamp my authority on something that is minimal, and then faced with a challenge immediately after of a crude tackle like that, he ducks it. That is why people become so infuriated with referees. Argentinian players are rather bemused. Now this calls for captaincy of the highest order by both Ruggeri and Valderrama. They've got to stay to the players. After all, it's football is going to win this, not muscle. And they certainly have shown us plenty football. The shouting and the balling going on by Oscar Cordoba in there by Rodriguez still high and bothering that defence
Let's see if the game settles down. And they concentrate on football. That is so vital. That's out. Alvarado, rather perplexed in midfield. Zapata has it. Back out there to Medina Bello. Alderama goes after that. Touched inside, but he stood it with a shot. Really, that's Patti Stutter's first real effort in the game when you think of it. Running there by Valen Valencia. Yes, I think. Uh, doing a little bit of pushing well, both of these players will automatically miss a game I don't like you know the use of hands and elbows in a game you know you if it's a blatant punch really you go after the execution of uh, they need savage punishment for that, there's no question at all about it, but it, sometimes you get a little flare up. All that would require was, would be some soothing words, then it wouldn't happen again. Well, one would imagine you go after that, and if it does happen again, that, that's the, the clash that was going on between the pair of them, which, of course, resulted in both being sent off. I must say, it's very difficult for the professional footballer under tremendous pressure to be absolutely impeccable in every piece of conduct. The worst kind of fouling that I'd like is cynical things, the, the subtle thing, that, that the, the attempt to hide, a little flare-up like that, which is, you know, after all, it's a man's game. I don't apologise for what uh, sometimes goes on like that. I always feel that two excellent players are sent off who've not been at all in bother in this game. Um, it really doesn't do the game any uh, good at all. It doesn't enhance it in any way. And what I think is a, a weak referee. there by Arista Sabal. When you think of it, Colombia have been playing extremely well without Arista Sabal. He's hardly been on the ball. So he may have a contribution to make yet in the last half hour of this game, which we approach. And watch there by Cordoba. No danger in that shot. You just get the impression that the players are slightly shell shot as a result of that flare-up. It's almost as if the game has been anaesthetized, going through the motions at the moment. It may recover. Might just be kept in and is... Oh, wow. Well. I think the whole of the ball was over the line. Superbly well there by Herrera, who likes to attack down the right. He's got a lot of pace. Valderrama, tending to go back the way now.
drawing the Argentinian players towards them. Valderrama. Valencia. Up there by Ruggeri, almost to Alistair Zaba. Now Rodriguez. It's a much cannier game now. Colombia crowding him out very well, but Rodriguez picks up again. Perhaps the most dominating figure in midfield for the Argentinians. Inside is Simoni. That's a bit of all. Better Stutte is offside, I think. And I think he's been caught offside more than any other player in this tournament. His style is running forward for the, the ball played inside the defender. And there he is caught. He wasn't far off that time. And now what uh, Colombia have done is place Valencia beside Alistair Sabal. The two of them up front now. And Colombia have pulled other players back into midfield. Without Rincon, they've got uh, Carlos Perea there. Now we're getting uh, substitution. It looks as if Alistair Sabo is coming off and Valderrama. Great applause now for Valderrama going off. marvellous first half he's had but he's he's uh, an older player of course almost 32 so we've got Garcia and Lozano now on of that Lozano substitution put on by Rodriguez almost to Batistuta the way across by Alton uh, by Medina Bello and I think offside again or certainly a free kick yeah, free kick to uh, Argentina, in fact. Now, this could be interesting. Back will go that defensive wall. There's still a lot of buzz, by the way, about that goal that was set up by Hugo Sanchez. Yeah, that was a hand there. Uh, in the Mexico... That's the other substitution, by the way. In the Mexico-Argentina game, when he just poked the ball through when it... They hadn't got themselves organized. The referee's perfectly entitled to let them take a free kick if, they, if he thinks the conditions of obtaining a roll right, but it was unconventional, let's put it that way. You don't see that happen all that often. Around the penalty area, that is. All put through, they can't get a shot in. And there's a great little flick on. I, now I wonder who got his foot to that. That may have been a pass back. <laughs> Well, there was a push let's see what happened there there's a foot got in or it was the Argentinian one it was in fact as a Pato who got his foot to that 18 minutes gone in the second half still one each Lozano the substitute uh, played forward for Gomez a little bit slow there, Valencia with it, all in his own now, you'll see. Now they've created a little space on the right. 
again it's Herrera coming up Ooh, Herrera was taking late notice how intelligently he ran back into space again but the ball was a poor one not a spectacular player but a shrewd tactician there's evidence there now here he is again players also might be considering what each will do us that's always been a fear Lying deeper. Well, they can't afford to make mistakes like that and a bit of carelessness creeping into the game now. In the first half, that would have been put right to the foot of Lozano. By the way, things are shaping Argentina. If they get this draw, we'll head the section. Colombia next. break forward here Medina Bello and the goalkeeper very bravely down on that and I think the referee acknowledges a head knock like that has to be attended to Cordoba bravely getting down to that the break by Medina Bello he was looking inside when it was his own player who took him on the head I really can't fault Medino Bello for the way he tried to finish that because he realized that yet again he had Batistuta covered. There's nothing he could do about it. 20 minutes gone. Still one each in the second half. We're down to 10 men. Off a Redondo for Argentina and Rincon for Colombia. A little flare up. But I think the referee might have sorted out without the red cards. And away, trotting across there, is Rodriguez. The Argentinian supporters uh, acknowledging the fact that their team could be at the top of the group if they hold on to the scoreline. Ooh, the goalkeeper not fully recovered from that knock, I don't think. goes to Batistuta and very good tackling Garcia got back picked up by Valencia they've got to get into the tackle quickly with him knocked on there by Garcia forward by Valencia he has the pace he's very deceptive when you look at him firstly you think he's lumbering but indeed he's gobbling up the space and on it will come Villarreal who was a substitute in the game against uh, Mexico well that's most surprising unless they feel that Rodriguez has run himself out a little and that wouldn't be at all surprising but he's certainly still being influential Maybe trying to preserve him a little bit. Valencia going in for this and pushing. Meanwhile, for Argentina, Villarreal, uh, Villarreal has come on. I don't pay any attention to that caption, by the way, there over the place with them. Manon is from uh, Boca Juniors, the run forward and that's offside. It's 
So Rodriguez has gone off. You can hear the Argentinians in the background. And what a different game we're having now. Oh, well, he said he does admire the Mexican goalkeeper Campos for doing such things. And I like to see goalkeepers playing football now. Some people hate it, but I think in balance the pass back uh, legislation has been excellent now. Once again, touched inside or too hard, but Valencia determined to go forward. And just at the end, that little spot there almost paid off. Look at him, looked as if he was missing the ball, then charged after it. Picked up by Zapata, but uh, the referee, I think arguing with Ruggeri, and also with uh, Borelli, I think something must have been said. Argentinians pleading with him. That happened off the ball. In any case, it's uh, the captain booked. I think it's something he must have said. Low draw now and a great shot. Goyka cheer. He just had one or two slips in this game. Very left there from Valencia's shot. Was that not brilliantly aimed? Very good free kick indeed. And so we go into the last 20 minutes. It's one all, 10 men against 10 without the two players sent off. Redondo Argentina, Rincon, Colombia. We've had all of these substitutions, Garcia, Lozano, Villaria, and Perez, Perez who came on during that Rami when the players were substituted, Perez number 20 for Colombia as well. The game has disintegrated, one has to admit, since the sendings off. get the impression that uh, they'll just let a goal come along if it comes along they're not going to work too hard for it they are both through to the quarterfinals in any case and Argentina looked as if they'll be facing Uruguay if it stays like this oh wasn't that cool now then all you critics of uh, the new law what do you make of that goalkeeper Heading the ball out, Franz Beckenbauer could have done any better than that. Uh, almost got the one two, closed down a little very quickly, and Garcia tried to get away there. Perez I was talking about play centered mostly in midfield now Locked on there by Valencia oh now he's taken right out of the play now that was deliberate where's the yellow card now watch this watch it oh look at it I mean couldn't be more obvious that's like a pickpocket walking up and asking for your wallet. It's as obvious as that. And yet no yellow card. That's what really riles you. And Batistuta chasing shadows yet again in this game. Scored six in the last tournament. He's only scored one so far. That was 
is uh, Alvarez getting that away. Now this is a big substitute. Lozano. Well, I think, clearly, I think uh, Colombia is suffering more from the absence of Rincon than Argentina are from Redondo. I think uh, Argentina are quite capable in midfield of uh, filling in for Redondo. Although he's a very valuable player, but Colombia were relying very much on the likes of Valencia getting service from Valderrama and knowing that Rincon there was going to give him some help, if not only go through himself. And now Valencia on his own, with Arastazabal having been taken off, I think Colombia are settling for a draw here. And that long is shot, way off target, Lozano. Might get more substitutions. The Argentinians, of course, wanting to try out as many players as they possibly can. Looking like a cluster warming up. Fifteen minutes left. One each. And the game has fallen away since uh, we were reduced to ten men aside. Last 15 minutes may decide the fate of where these two teams will play in the next round. This is Group C we have here, of course. And the first in Group C will play the second in Group A, Uruguay. So it's heading for an Argentinian-Uruguay quarter-final. That should be some game, although I'd favor the Argentinians in it. And a break by Valencia, look at his foot again, is he getting in? Oh, now claims that he might have been pushing, he was indeed. Oh, he doesn't mess about, does he? He was, he was almost going forward like a rugby league player there. And although he fell spectacularly, he was doing all the pushing and the shoving away. And now a little spot by Colombia. Almost taken through there by Gomez as he picked that up. As I was saying, Argentina look as if they will be playing Uruguay if it stays like this. And it may be that uh, Colombia will have to play Brazil. That's a possibility, or Chile, or Paraguay. That's fairly open. And they made a blunder and then almost to the, the line went to Medina Bello. Well, it's almost as if the players had realized the caption had come up and screened them saying 15 minutes to go. They are within sight of the end of the game. And I think they, they feel that instinctively. And Medina Bello doing very well to run on the right. And here we have that substitution. It is Alberto Acosta coming on. The man who was player of the year in Argentina, Argentina in 92. Plays for Boca Juniors. Although he's, he's had experience of French football in Toulouse. That's going to be a goal kick. And nobody anxious to push it back to the goalkeeper. Well, Batistuta has come off. He's at a lean time of it, I have to say. The service, in my view, hasn't been adequate to him. On the other hand, he seems to be running rather naively offside far too often. That's Zapata with it, leaving it to Basualdo.
free kick and up will go the taller players I think uh, Ruggeri will come forward as well it's deep it's a good one the goalkeeper takes it now he is a spectacular goalkeeper he obviously likes to play football I think he could play centre back with ease but he hasn't looked too clever with cross balls. That one was a better one. He was fouled in any case, and Colombia with that free kick. Just forward there by Carlos Pereira. Carlos Pereira wants to play for the club that uh, Valderrama played for, Montpellier in France. Obviously given a, a very good rundown of the place. Colombia still capable of playing some of this pretty football, but highly productive at times. A big sub, he does look like Rincon, doesn't he? He's almost a, a replica of him. That was Lozano trying to go through. Go to Argentina. Argentina, who won the World Cup in 1978 with every player a homebred and home base player except for Mario Kempis and this is what they are up against now that has all changed much of the talent has gone abroad and we're seeing tonight uh, one of the efforts of the manager to weld together a team that's so largely of strangers not together all that often but nevertheless coming through this tournament and I think benefiting by the couple of games they've already had they are now beginning to play confidently although they will miss Redonda in the next game in the quarter-final if it is to be against Uruguay eight minutes of the game left Trying to get that ball forward to Valencia. Now it does run through your mind. If ooh, that's another late one there, this time by Altamirano. You just get the impression that the referee has decided he's gone through his quota of yellow and red cards. And that's it for the day. Thank you very much. Nice turn by Valencia. Now who's he got inside? He's going himself, and I think he was blocked. I certainly think in the most subtle way the defender simply got between he and the ball. Now watch again. Look at it. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, mark the referee's name well, Mario. Resendez from Brazil and I hope we don't see his likes again and those people who make these adjudications of referees I think we'll be assessing the man who's going to do the final I don't think it's yet been selected I guess he's got as much chance of doing the final as Lord Such has of being elected to Westminster having said that now we have about six minutes left Altimirano who got away with that last tackle there tucked away from Simone nice little 
of a ball inside, touched away by Mendoza. Yes, it does go through my mind of Colombia. I think we've made a game of it. We were stung, we got back, and it was an actual instinctive reaction to losing that other goal to play all the good football. But then you begin to think logically about it. Whom would they rather play? As second in, in this group, or as winners of the group, as winners they get Uruguay, as runners-up they get uh, nations with lesser pedigree, like maybe Chile or Paraguay, uh, and Brazil they've already seen. I think they could take this present Brazil squad, so it may well be that they're thinking finishing second isn't all that bad. Nice little hip throw there by the man who's himself got a lot of rough treatment, Valencia. Now, getting back to that refereeing decision and the sendings off, we had uh, a sending off that uh, I was witness to in the Champions League in Europe when Haitley X of uh, Monaco and now with uh, Rangers was sent off for a very sudden flare-up with the Belgian player in, in uh, Ibrooks against the Bruges for something that lasted about three or four seconds was one of these instinctive things between professional players and sent off it all seemed a bit harsh at the time and I think the sendings off tonight have been exactly in that category there was contact made of that there's no doubt but I think a good referee always has to look at context to come from viciousness from something that's been running through the game or just uh, an eruption, a sudden eruption, which I think it was. Whoa, he lays it on, doesn't he? I think he's vying with the Mexican goalkeeper here in long admires for being a little bit of a circus entertainer. Pereira, uh, Osvaldo, Altimirano, Just as where the a last second score, which there might be. That was uh, picked off there by the Dilla Bello coming down that far side. Now Valencia on his own. Well, he's taken to this task well. And a great admiration for the big fellow there. He is courageous enough. He does use a bit of his own strength and bulk. But why not? an honest to goodness player with a, a great deal of skill that seemed to be a deflection on this side Perez going to be a free kick or oh, another booking well he, he, he holds a card high in the air with a group of players around him well, now off to guess who it was exactly booked I make it uh, less than two minutes left of this game Marvellous first half, and the second half marred by the sendings off, which has deeply offended the game. Simeone, we see, I think that's a guess, too. 
Not a bad run forward there by Valencia again. But he was never going to score with a shot like that. There he goes now to Alvarez. Away by Herrera. Now we're last, we're into the last minute. A game of so many different characters. Started off with uh, what looked almost like a cup final in the first 15 minutes. An extraordinary opening goal. Credit to Simeone for being in a very warm country. The coolest man of fuel. Then Rincon, the man who was ultimately sent off with a superb solo effort in the, the penalty area. Then the sendings off and that player up. And now these teams are playing for the final whistle in such an obvious way that I think people are now drifting to the entrance. If a goal came now, it would be by a dreadful defensive error, I think. However, I must compliment both sides and we now are going to stop each time for the excellence, the high quality of the first 45 minutes. It is absolutely marvellous and comforting to realise that a player like Valderrama, OK, he might be creaking a little, can still exert such an influence on a football part by playing in the classical way, good passes, good touches, good vision. Argentina may not have had a player like him, but in Rodriguez, they always had a man who was getting around the field, very busy indeed. Zapati, Zapata and Medina Bello giving him good work in midfield, and that defence led by Ruggeri looking very solid, and the final whistle does go ultimately disappointing, one has to say, after that marvellous build-up. The second half disintegrated after the sendings off. And I think they've been told, make sure you keep in with the referees, because I'm sure underneath all of that, the players are seething about the way he's controlled the game. Let me take you back to that image you saw early on in the match when the players were milling around themselves and the referee just stood in the background, as he is now, looking like uh, a spectator watching a street fight. But it didn't get to quite that stage, but that was the attitude. And thereafter, I do think a referee like that tries to show a bit of bravado. And that's where the red cards came out for Redondo and Rincon. Nevertheless, Argentina now top the group and they will be facing Uruguay. And I'm sure they'll relish that Colombia with the runners-up of group